Tasmania has blown our expectations out of the water so far, and the East Coast is arguably the most hyped of all. We're on a week-long road trip to find out why Tassie has been so highly recommended. With the help of locals and other travellers, our first two days in Hobart and Bruny Island were unreal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've fallen in love with Bruny and we've only been here for... <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> After spending three days exploring the area and all the local recommendations, we've narrowed it down to the eight top things to see, know, eat, and drink on the east coast of Tasmania. Spoiler alert, it's amazing. <gasps> Oh. You know when you go to a place and it actually looks like the pictures? And don't forget to stay to the end because every video in this Tassie series has bloopers. <laughs> This Tasmania series is made possible thanks to our friends at Jetstar. Once you see how incredible the East Coast is, you'll be straight to the link below to check out the crazy cheap fares to get here. Then you can use the savings to add on some extras or save the dollars. For us in the off season, we added 25 kilos of baggage each. But if you're visiting the East Coast in summer, you could probably go carry on only, lock in the cheapest fares and avoid paying for baggage that you're not going to use. Add upfront seating for a quick exit and you'll be on the beach ASAP. So check the link below for some unbeatable prices and get yourself into, first off, Freysene National Park into Wineglass Bay, one of the most photographed spots in Tassie for a good reason. There's so many incredible hikes and trails, but we were recommended a short but rewarding walk. We're on our way, steep and kind, but we're on the way to the Wineglass Bay Lookout. It is 1.3 k's each way, so it should take just over an hour. Sorry, we're walking through rocks now. <laughs> How cool. And, uh, whoa, between boulders. And uh, we've been told that once we get to the top, best views in Tasmania. So we've got high Big hopes. Cool. Freysene National Park is full of out of this world scenery and stunning beaches, but Wineglass Bay hits different and you'll see how it got the name soon. And if we're honest, we're not sure if we're going up there, up there. We're going between two, aren't we? Or, yeah, so maybe it's through there. We'll just make it up as we go. There, 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 <laughs> we're going to just start it. Well, that's it, guys. <laughs> White glass bay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the wrong About side. About 10 minutes from the car park. <laughs> that's beer can bay. Is it? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> when you go to a place and it actually looks like the pictures? Yes. <gasps> looks better than the pictures. Mate, let's go up here. Yeah. I mean, we weren't lied to. This is special. And it's so incredibly peaceful. I wanted to say that's like a really beautiful thing about where we are here is that it's, yeah. it's really isolated. Oh, we can hear the birdies. And that lady up there, but still. <laughs> If you're not keen on hiking for hours down to the sand of Wineglass Bay, Friendly Beaches is the answer. Just up the road and you can drive right to it. The road's a bit bumpy though. But it's worth it to see the miles of empty, unspoiled white sand beaches. So Friendly Beaches, part of the Freysene, also known as the Freysenet <laughs> National Park. It's like no one here. What a beautiful time to visit as well. Like the sky looks so nice. The sand oh. is really white. Yeah, I've actually gone the wrong way. That may... <laughs> If you only saw that, you might think this is a bit crappy. That's not Look very friendly. That. You come this way. Whoa, it's so white. It's beautiful. And there's the water. I was going to say the sea, ocean. I don't, know where, I don't know what it is, but it's so blue. We have some people that really call us up on making sure we say sea and ocean right. Now but we're anyway, traumatized yeah, we, to get it right. We sometimes just joke between us about the sea ocean. <laughs> Uh, this sea ocean is absolutely stunning. Whoa. This is like the whitest sand. And it's not even bright, like it's not even a super sunny day or anything. No. Imagine what this looks like on a sunny day. Yeah. And there's one, two, three, four, five other people here and that's it. Oh, and a wallaby. We saw a wallaby. His friend. What do we, what do we name him? I don't think we did. <laughs> I was trying to think of a name. Wilson the wallaby. Wilson the wallaby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nestle on a chemo. <laughs> Did you know? Me? You, you were home as well. Oh. And you, I just read that one of the reasons it's called Friendly Beaches is thought to be because of the first interaction with the local Aborigine being super friendly, which is nice Aww. to hear. Is that a wallaby right there? 
Yep. Yeah, they're coming right down to the beach. There's amazing national parks all over Tassie, but something to consider is needing a valid parks pass to access them. We paid online and looking at the pricing here, so it depends how long how long you're staying for. So we paid the $89.50 because we've got a car. That gives you a couple of months, but that seems like the best one if you're going over multiple days. Otherwise that one is $44, but that's only 24 hours, and we're probably gonna spend the next couple of days going in and out. So that seemed like the best one to go for. On a tissue. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> so maybe be a bit more prepared than us and print your pass in advance. Next up, wine. That alone might be enough of a reason for you to visit. But if you're not a wine lover, don't worry, we found the ultimate all-in-one vineyard. You can't visit the East Coast and not taste some Tassie wine. There's vineyards everywhere, but we found Devil's Corner for one particular reason. We're a little bit overwhelmed when we walked in, to be fair, because there's so much going on. There's a tower, there's like seafood, there's pizza, there's all sorts of stuff. What more do you want? Oh, you've got, you got everything, do you? Have you. Hey, you've got chocolate. <laughs> chocolate as well. That, that's a happy lady. Oh, it's massive. It's Ooh, huge. Look at that crust. I love the edge. Looks on good. That. I smell. Smell test. <laughs> Tasmania has a much cooler climate than a lot of Australia, so it produces some distinctly different and unique wines from the rest of the country. But if you're not a connoisseur, we found a unique twist you'll probably like. Because they've got this off-season experience where they pair local chocolate and local wine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. They look so good. Amazing. They do, you've done great work. Can I get any better? I don't know how many times I've said that on this trip already, but honestly, they just know how to mix things together here. Mm. So this is this is a bubbly. It's delicious, eh? But it's said to pair it with this white chocolate. It's got pop rock and orange. Not super poppy, a little bit crackly. Good balance of white chocolate and orange. It surprisingly does go really well with that. It's like they know what they're doing. We've driven past loads of vineyards, and from the outside, a lot of them looked like a little bit dead, maybe a little bit old, a little bit dated. I can understand why people said Devil's Corner because yeah, this place is, is modern, it's flash, uh, getting that some of the people that recommended it kind of know our style as well. And I wasn't expecting the view, like I was expecting all of this, but this is insane to sit here and have this as well. Next stop up the East Coast. The Lobster Shack. I've been looking forward to this one. Me too, Tassie's like known for its seafood. And this place has an insane reputation. So we're here for some lobster, some Tessie rock lobster. Just look at the amount of boats. This if is that's where they not, catch it from. If that's it's not a sure it. sign that this is going to be incredible seafood, I don't know what it is. It even smells like seafood. <laughs> <laughs> look how clear the water is. Whoa. They must be doing well as well. Look at this. There's a massive extension going in. Huge. They're doing well. I think all of my hopes and dreams just came true. Short of somebody, <laughs> short of someone literally walking from, from the ocean views that we've got right here, bringing this right to our table, I don't think it could get any fresher than what I'm looking at right here. It smells amazing. It's so <laughs> There's all sorts of amazing seafood around Tassie, thanks in part to the cold waters. That meant that Dane could tick off his seafood chowder addiction, and sitting in the sun with some local craft beers alone was a treat but everyone told us about this one must-eat meal. So apparently the Lobster Shack is the home of the best lobster roll in all of Tasmania. It's a decent sized lobster And she roll. is banged. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's a winner. It's almost a sweetness to it, but like it's buttery as well. And then I think the bun adds a lot of value because it's, it's crispy on the outside, but still kind of soft on the inside. Yeah, I'm stoked. <laughs> Further up the east coast is a must-visit area, Bay of Fires. The name originates from an English navigator in 1773 when he saw campfires burning along the coast. But it's not just one bay, there is over 50 kilometres of insanely clear water and white sand beaches. Our first stop is Binalong Bay. I can already see a little glimpse behind danger. Basically we're looking for a bit of a, a lone tree, sort of uh, Lake Wanaka vibes in Skeleton Bay within the Binalong Bay area. So, I mean, even if we don't find it, I have a feeling that this is gonna be beautiful. So many whales along here as well. 
three different kinds. Wow. That goes to show as well, once you go along this great ocean drive, which is kind of the bit that we've just done. So much coastline. Look at the rock pools. That'd They're be just stunning. It's clear as. So wow. clear. I don't, I don't think we're in the right spot I to find like the one tree situation. Yeah, I love that there's this whole viewing platform here and there's so much to see. I mean, look at the beach out there. Look at that coastline. And this is, this feels like all holiday homes. Yeah, definitely. Really, really chill. We're looking at all these places. You can see the blinds are closed. And we're just like, come on, man, give us some keys. We'll look after I'll it. I'll look after it. <laughs> you got a dog? I'll look after the yeah, dog Yeah, we'll too. drive your car. What do you need? <laughs> There's so many options. <laughs> We've just driven for another 10 minutes or so around to a spot called Cozy Corner North. I feel like in the mood that we are in with the ground we're covering, we're probably speeding through all of this a little bit much, but again, it's it's all about the beaches here. This is okay, where- so I read that Cozy Corner is the best in terms of rocks. And okay. I just thought, okay, go down here and then turn left. Okay. Have a look. We're talking boulders. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I think we gotta walk down there. Oh, that's quite far. <laughs> yeah, it's far. <laughs> We've stopped at, I don't know, I've lost track. Four, five beaches maybe now. And they're all like this. Endless white sand. We've got the big boulders in the background. Beautiful water. <laughs> There's no other spots like it. It's not all about the beach though. I mean, it kind of is because it is so special, so beautiful, but we've come inland, bit of an adventure. It's all about the lakes today. And this is the little blue lake. Look at that color. <laughs> it's like a milky turquoise color because of the all the minerals that were left behind when it was a tin mine. Kind of has Lake Tikapo vibes, kind of, you know, yeah. South Island. Wow, I, I was not expecting that much color. You can probably tell we didn't have the best weather for our visit, but this came so highly recommended and you can just see from the images here. If it's sunny, I think this is an amazing spot to be. The second lake is even more unique, I think. Although it did take a little bit of time to get here. Past the skate park, over that bridge, down this path, past the lake, and then here you are. And where you are is the mountain bike mad town of Derby to do something a little crazy. Because Lake Derby is home to the only floating wood-fired sauna in the country. Why is it floating though? Why is the freezing ass water so close to the warmth my body always craves? Apparently it's built with the idea of getting people to reconnect with nature, disconnect from the outside world and do some cold water therapy by plunging into a pitch black, 65 meter deep, ice cold lake. Ugh. Really? Are we doing it? Is it another step? Get up, get up, get up! I just didn't do it! I didn't do it! I didn't do it! I didn't do it. I get pretty cold quite easy, I have to say. Coming straight from here into there, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. We were told this is the experience, is you've gotta take that plunge. I love that. In the next episode, we're heading inland to Cradle Mountain. If you've not heard of it before, you're gonna absolutely love what we get up to. But before you leave, enjoy us making a fool of ourselves. Oh, I didn't see you there. Lake Tikapo vibes. Alright, and go. From award winning wine. Oh, I didn't say the whole thing. Is <laughs> <laughs> you another step? What was it? I lost it. Where did it go? The Where did it go? So we've just tripped. <laughs> Come on, you. Let's go. Get back, get back, get back. Got a blind. Okay, sweet. No, oh, I can't get my hoods up. One of the reasons it's called Friendly Bay. Beaches. Beaches. Whoa, it looks like a helmet. Whoa. Look. Go ride your motorbike. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> <laughs>